Okay, folks, real fast. Here is the size of Venus, just by objectical looking of the size of the circle. There's Mercury, and there is Saturn. Going to these unobstructed views of Lasco, I will show you some dates in a minute, and they are basically, let me go up here because so you don't think I'm trying to pull a rabbit out of my ass. There we go, there should be today's date, okay? So you're looking at today's unobstructed view. I.e., I'm going to try to blow this up just at the end of the video. Look at this arc on top of, and I think it's from the arc that we have seen and when we're watching and looking at Google, Whiskey, whatever, and I do tell everybody to look at as many views as you can and not the government NASA view. NASA's got there now. Let us show you what's out there. Look, uh, trust what you want to trust. Look at all of them. Okay, so going back real fast, I will go to the map. This is basically currently Venus. Mercury and Saturn behind the sun, okay? And so everything's at a different distance from Earth and everything, sun and everything out there. Now, Denab is there, ladies and gentlemen, and I will quickly show you that the idea that Denab is there, this is current sky right now. I will show you 12 a.m., either the previous 12 a.m. or our next 12 a.m., Denab, it'll look like a holy cross. You'll see the arms, and you've got all these planets, and people will probably, oh, you dumbass, it's this and that. I don't care right now. I know that's Denab, and I know it's part of this cross that is way, way, way beyond the sun, from what I understand. Now, maybe it is a little bit farther and closer in front of the sun and between Earth and so forth and so on, but from what I understand, I think it's way, way, way back beyond the sun. But when you look at the Soho pictures, you will see these objects and you will always see these V's, which are all the constellations, because everything is a V out there. So the idea that when I showed you what was from the space uh, lab, that the idea that it could be Ellen, and it may have been, but it could be any of sisters of all these V's that are in space, ladies and gentlemen. All the constellations and all the broken particles of comets that are dying are in a V shape, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so you'll always see parts and dust and flopping or just basically straight up movement of comets through space and it's always V's. That's why we have the V on the NASA logo. Hey, look at it, Denab, we have a V, V, V. There's always V's up in space, ladies and gentlemen. And when a man-made object, you look at a satellite that gets blown up, i.e. the pictures of the satellite that was destructed by a push button operation of blowing the satellite before it got too close in Earth's atmosphere to may possibly hit something of human compatibility or American military defense or anything like that, it was blown up. When a satellite, i.e. in the future I could show you a Chinese satellite that got blown up in space, when stuff that's man-made gets blown up in space, it turns into a bunch of looks like a bunch of Kit Kat or Hershey bars or whatever politically incorrect on candy bars in space. It'll look like pencils i.e. what has been blown up in the past because the idea that when you look on Google or you look at anything Whiskey Sky or something like that, you see something out in space that it looks like a pencil or a, some straight stick, pick em up stick or something in space and it's not a V. It's something that's been man-made before, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's been man-made by us or our, that's right, forefathers, folks. It's all starting to come together, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at any of my old videos, and any of other people's videos without going goofy. There's no space. There's no Martians. There's nothing in outer space. If there is something out there anywhere and it's got a brain or it's got anything on it, fur, mammal, it is human. It's been here before on Earth or the moon. That's why the possible no-fly zone on the moon or close to it. They don't want to see what's on the moon, ladies and gentlemen. NASA and everybody wants to hide it. Okay, now here we go. Venus, remember these sizes. Venus, remember Jupiter is bigger than anything. I mean, it's real big. I mean, it's not bigger than anything, but it's real big. Okay, Mercury, and there. So now we go to the, really fast, we'll go to the latest SOHO. So more than likely, this should be, if I remember correctly, if we're just looking at what we're looking at, I believe Saturn should be the smallest. I think then we have Mercury and then we have Venus. So let's go back real fast to the map. Make sure I'm not confused and make sure you're not confused. Should be correct. Venus is the biggest. Mercury is in between, and Saturn is the smallest. So we go back to the local latest SOHO. Unobstructed, blown up 400%. So this should be, not getting confused, I believe that Venus, uh, 
Mercury, yeah, I believe, and Saturn. I'm, if I mixed up on that, we just had it right a minute ago. So anyway, so that's what those objects are. So we have this object that's close to the sun right now, which maybe it's another planet or whatever, but that, I believe, is also one of these objects that we've been looking at, Ellen and blown up. This might be the black hole that a lot of people are worried about or whatever, but that's this is behind the sun looking at us, so this could be something back behind us. That could be the darkness of the idea that the meatballs that the scientists, always, I mean the astronauts, always used to see. Now this is something in space putting or illuminating something over top of the sun and blocking, because that's not man-made, ladies and gentlemen. That is something in space that is doing that to the shot from the SOHO camera to looking at the sun. Okay, So something's putting a halo on the sun right now. Comment, whatever. Is it common alanin? Is it Nibiru? We will get it down on that's ass. Now, looking at this in the arm that it shades the sun, and they have different names for what they call it, but we shade it so that we get these camera views. Just check this out here. Look at this material here, okay? And then they have taken... Okay, crappy editing, big deal. These are the Vs, folks, and you're going to see Vs of anything that's Mother Nature out in space. We have Vs, V, V, V. There's a V there. There's a V here. There's V here. There's V everything. Everything gets triangular like a diamond out there in outer space. Okay, now, you got it empty, Zach? Before you start playing around with it, it's empty, right? Okay, gun safety right here at Beano Black every day of the week. Okay, now, here we go with more V. We blow it up and get a little closer. You got V action. This is what we were able to see with the little clothes off the lady here before, and I believe that this is, it doesn't matter, super giants, it doesn't matter. There is, and that's not Mercury, Saturn, or anything close to the sun, ladies and gentlemen. This is objects of the supergiants, and also, more than likely, you know, any asteroid belt. could be Alanin's asteroid belt. It could be anything. We're going to have another shot here in a second when I show you the idea that what is basically wide open on a Soho picture today. We'll show you the date and the whole nine yards. This should be the object that I showed you earlier on one of my previous ones of, uh, you know, our military friends or whatever starting to finally let us look at the sun without being masqueraded in cut. Uh, I laid off the internet for a couple of days and now we're seeing some stuff. All right, now, okay folks, here's the material by the sun where the arm usually is that we're seeing some shots. So somehow either that or our scientist friends or something is waking up and they want to see it too. And they knew it was there that where I showed you in previous videos where the idea there is Alanin or whatever should be yelling in, or what we call this, that, everything like that. So when everybody gets mad that it's like, oh, it's Leonis, and it's that, and it's never moving close to us, and it's never coming, everything like that, well, you can be fooled and controlled by mind control and BS whenever the heck you want to be controlled by mind control and BS and everything like that. But me being a real stupid veteran's kid that doesn't listen to anybody's crap and always tries to figure everything out for themselves, I don't listen to anybody's crap. Now, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with that area that we see here. I'll blow it up a little bit more, but here's the area above the halo on the sun today that we see, and also this object here and this object here, and we already know that more than likely that this is, I believe, Venus, and then we either have Saturn or Mercury. One of them smaller. Well, we, you know, you can keep track of that from going through it, but this is all the material to the arm area of, and i.e., NASA can control where that arm's at. But today we can kind of see what's there or what they're trying to feed us. But from this shot to the other Soho shot previously, you'll just have to take and rewind the video, folks, and go back. You will see these objects of the supergiants because the sun is in the supergiants. So you can't say that it's not the supergiants. Either that or it's one of these asteroid belts, which is close to Earth, which NASA has lied about and said is, oh, that's not, that stuff is nowhere near close to the Earth right now. Hey, don't get your little private telescope out and start looking because the idea that you'll get the show of a lifetime because for 3,000 more years, you probably will never see this stuff again, ladies and gentlemen. So they're learning and we're learning because we're not listening to their BS. We just learn as we go and see what the shots we get and stuff like that. So, going to our Soviet friends, we will see what he is feeding us full of or being honest, you can trust anybody's JPL, but folks, the only thing I always say is when you look at their JPLs, make sure that you go ahead and look at the l the Earthmoid, which was the idea that whether it's either that object is either that close to the Earth or the idea that 
it's as close as it could get to the Earth, okay? So always look at the Earthmoid on the data. Earthmoid means distance from Earth, okay? So blowing this guy's picture that he has of Alanin will end up more than likely, if you look at this, it looks like what I showed you that the space lab caught, okay? Here's the brightness to the left. There is the two tetrahydrons, okay? So Bino is not exactly a thousand percent correct, ladies and gentlemen. I could be wrong. There's lots of these in space, but it sure does look like whatever the space lab had a shot of, sure the heck might have been Alanin, ladies and gentlemen. There's your two gonads. If you want to be a smart ass shade tree mechanic, there's the nuts, and there's the light to the left, ladies and gentlemen. Get it down to layman's terms here. So, and let's go to, I have this transcribed on We'll take a look at what they write here on this. Uh, okay, you can rewind to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is what they are observing, okay? This is what NASA and all the astronomer buddies, uh, we could have here in the United States, Germany, Dutch, Ireland, French, could be looking at the same stuff. It doesn't really matter. But this is what those Soviet guys are looking at right now, okay? And their French friends and this and that and everything. Like that. That's what they're looking at, okay? So is that Ellenin? Well, you research it and define it out, but that's it. So you've got the data right there. Freeze the frame on the video here or whatever. That's what they're looking at. It. I got it right off of what they're feeding the National Observatory over here in the United States, which has got them getting their views. Okay, so. Okay, folks, so this is what they are talking about. This is transcribed. So you can read this, freeze frame this, and read what they were saying. Okay. And I'll go to the PDF real quick that they turn into the long title. So saving film time here, folks, just freeze frame it. Okay, folks, here's the address of the PDF. So you can go look that up. And it's a lot of data. Minor planet circulars, minor planets of comets are published on behalf of Division Three, the International Ast Astronomical Union, usually in batches. And this is all with Harvard and their tax dollars, I mean our tax dollars to them and everything like that, NASA and everything. It's just a big ass menagerie, but it's our tax dollars at work because otherwise Harvard and all these wouldn't have our NASA and getting along and talking to our Russian friends over there. And this is the highlighted area here that they are observing. And then they see all their readings that they sent in to them. And it's a long list and just zip down through here real fast. All right, folks, so make sure you use SkyMap, and make sure you also use Worldwide Telescope. Use the Google Sky, Google Earth. Use all kinds of different things to look at stuff in space, okay? The constellations and everything. Don't trust just one. Try to match everything together and find out who's trying to lie to everybody, okay? So... So, folks, uh, C3... Today's date, 16, 18, Zulu time. All right, so, and we've already nailed it down to this is Venus, and that is, I believe, Saturn, and then there we got Mercury. Now, I could be wrong on the Mercury, because Mercury's small, but it's one of the small ones, okay? So we know for sure that that's Venus, and we know for sure that that's Saturn, because size-wise. Otherwise, these other objects are stuff that, boy, it's like, yep, we need some new school teachers because... I know my school teachers taught me what was right. So that's that view there. C3. I had damn good teachers. I don't even need a damn college degree. So anyway, we've got also this from C3 that has the deal. And then we also showed you that the idea that over here in this area with these objects that we see here, even today's crappy dubbing, but to the, today's, 2011, 10, 18, 6, 18. We move up on this, and I have it blown up 400%, and you can blow it up more. Uh, there you go. Just get some snapshots, folks, and start snapshotting and freeze framing and zooming stuff up. Okay? So with this shot, Alaska 3 is what that shot is. Okay? And then you also go in here to, you'll see these objects here. And go ahead and blow up that, folks on stereo behind core two, and you'll see what the heck's going on there too, okay? So, and then also, get ready to freeze frame what I'm gonna show you folks, polar drift. Look what's happened. Here's the dates and the times, you'll have to go back and look at this, I'm saving film time. This is factual data. 
Disclosure.